Good morning. Today's lesson is about food webs. Um, I'm working on the learning target. I can describe how energy and materials move through an ecosystem. We'll talk a little bit about how matter cycles and energy flows through the abiotic and biotic factors in an ecosystem. Um, all ecosystems start with producers. Anything that can convert the light energy into the chemical energy of food, I should say the light energy from the sun, into the chemical energy of the food in a plant that is then eaten by a primary consumer, who is eaten by a secondary consumer, who is then eaten by a tertiary consumer. Um, secondary consumers eat these herbivores considered producers and we kind of just um, look at how they work together to function in an ecosystem. So we're going to look at a pond water ecosystem that's similar to the one we have out by our high school. So I'm going to draw over here a little pond type ecosystem. Hopefully you can draw with me, that's the goal. And in our pond ecosystem, we have lots of different varieties of weeds and grasses over here. We have little cattails. Your picture of your ecosystem should have quite a bit in the way of producers. When we think about our ecosystems, um, the largest amount of organisms and the most energy is going to exist on the bottom of our trophic level pyramid. So I'm also going to kind of put this as sort of a window to the side. Um, I didn't mean to make it look like it was in the pond, but let's just think about this a little bit. So the biggest amount of organisms is always going to be this bottom part of your trophic level pyramid, and those are the producers. I'll try to spell that right. Those producers get all of the energy that they capture from the sun, and not all the energy that they capture makes it to this next level. Um, some of that's going to be used by the producer in some way. Maybe they make a flower or a seed. Um, so the next level that I'm going to draw on here is going to be the primary consumer. Okay, and that primary consumer when it eats the producers is going to also use some of that energy. So I'm going to draw a little, here's a tree over here. Not super realistic to have a pine tree right by a pond, but I suppose you never know. And we're going to put some water over the top of our little pond. And so far, all we see in our picture is the producers. So I'll add a couple primary consumers here. Maybe that's a little minnow. Um, maybe I'll draw some bigger fish right here that's going to eat the minnow. Um, we could do one small food chain, which is slightly different from a food web. We could say that the minnow is the primary consumer of this little producer algae type thing here. So let's say this is algae. If you think about how much algae you would see in a pond, you'd see significantly more. And then if that fish comes and eats this guy right here, we now have a secondary consumer. Okay, so this fish eats that guy. Now we have a secondary consumer. He would also be... Um, considered a carnivore if he's eating a fish. So these primary consumers are our herbivores. And then we have um, carnivores, which sometimes end up being omnivores. Omnivores. Food webs tend to get messy pretty quickly, so when you draw them in a pyramid, it looks really neat where we go from producer to primary consumer to secondary to tertiary consumer to quaternary consumer. <laughs> um, and that looks like it's sort of a one-way street. And that is how the energy works, right? This is the trophic levels right here. And in general, this is kind of a summary of what that looks like. And I'll kind of make this look maybe like a cutaway from our other drawing so that you know that that's not actually in the dirt of the pond. Um, but I'd like to draw another little player in this um, thing that I have here. And I'm going to put a heron, which we see a lot of, in our pond. We often have these really cool looking creatures with the wonky necks and the face knife for eating fish. Um, if this guy eats that fish, we now have the next level up. 
Um, so we've got our producers, a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary consumer. And right now, I've really just made a food chain, okay? When you draw these pictures of food chains and food webs, it's nice if you can kind of show the arrow going as the energy flows. So if this is our little minnow here, and this is our algae, and we were drawing one of these, you draw the arrow this way. A lot of times kids want to draw those backwards. But here we have a potential um, food chain that goes all the way up the trophic levels. And you can imagine that when we go out to those ponds, we see other living things. So we might see like a little bird hanging out on here who's eating a little bug that was on there that was eating the cattail, right? And, you know, perhaps sometimes um, this little bug might also eat off of this little thing here. And you start to get more of a web as opposed to a chain. That's kind of the only difference between a food web and a food chain. The food webs are kind of a more realistic depiction of what it looks like. So I hope that helps you with your assignments and I also hope you have a great day.